Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fuel for Success. This is episode 111. It's good to see everybody on this Wednesday morning. And uh, as my good friend Matt pointed out, my favorite number is 11. And 11 is in 111, three separate times, bonus points, uh, if you know whether or not it's a prime number. But math nerdiness aside, it's good to see my good friend and co-host, the one and only Matt Maddox. How are you this morning, my friend? I am absolutely awesome, and I mean that. Like, I cannot think of a day in a long time that I haven't woke up, and if somebody asked me how I'm doing, the answer would be always blessed, awesome, happy to be alive, great. Like, and I mean that. I'm just happy to be alive, my friend. I'm, with you on that. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about the now. I'm just excited. That's all there is to it. I'm excited that uh, we got episode 111, my friend. That's kind of pretty cool there. And that is your favorite number. People don't realize how fascinated you are with the number 11. But good to see you smiling, happy. The hat is off, so that means you accomplished your work. Good to see you got a little bit of rest. Your whiteboard is clean. All is well, my friend. We're ready to change the world. Absolutely. All is good. And today is Wednesday. And just like every Wednesday, we talk about faith and spirituality and a subject that we love to talk about. We could talk about it every day. We could probably talk about all five of our subjects every day. Um, every day. Yeah. So Literally every day. Yeah. So I, I guess I should stop saying that, right? But yeah, we could talk about it every single day. And of course, it's critically important to your overall health and well-being and the success of your life to have your spirit life in balance, understanding of faith and those sort of things. And um, so it's a... It's so what, what you're trying to tell is you believe in God now? <laughs> is this what I'm hearing? That through the success, you you now believe in God? This is awesome, man. I worked so hard on Mike with this. And, I, you, man, that is incredible. We need to all celebrate. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, Mike. Tell us, tell us, like, you know, when did it happen? <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, you know, it was over a decade ago. Um, but I'm glad you're just now catching up. It's good. It's good. I'll send you out a memo later. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Uh, yeah, there you go. The, <laughs> the running joke that Mike has. Uh, well, you know, years ago, 15 years ago, I did smoke. So um, yeah. back when I was uh, an atheist slash agnostic or whatever in the world I was. Really? Mike, not only is Wednesday our show about spirituality and faith, but we also have our Soul Winner show that comes on every every Wednesday. You know what I like that you do in the intro? You'll like, just like every Thursday, we talk about business and entrepreneurship. Or just like every Friday, yeah. it's family and relationships. And every Wednesday at 10 a.m. is the Soul Winner show. How many Soul Winner show have we done now? Uh, we're doing number 19 today. Imagine, that's literally 19 seminars. 19 seminars, soul winning seminars, taught by some of the best, free. Tell me we're not totally blowing blowing up content across the world, man. That's what it's about, Mike. We're doing what we can. It really is about. Awesome. <clears throat> what were you saying? It's, it's about what? Sorry, I interrupted you, man. And I'm waiting for you, and you're waiting for me. We're both too polite today. But I love, I love that your response was awesome, just because that's like a safe response. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I told you I was struggling with depression, and you didn't hear it. And your response was awesome. <laughs> like what if I just totally like said, "Hey, Mike, I'm really struggling with depression. Can you talk about it? You know, today." You know how I can come out of this and cry myself at sleep at night, and you're like, awesome. awesome. That's that's great, man. Uh, Tell us more. I could be a counselor. Well, maybe I couldn't. No, I could. Yeah. I'm uh. I was. My mind to it. I was actually just thinking how much I enjoy socially awkward situations. So I may try to contrive more of them on the show. 
Um, I believe. I believe in I believe in giving them, and I do often. You know, like if I meet like a, uh, maybe a young couple that's dating, I'll just ask them, "Well, have you guys kissed yet?" <laughs> and it's funny to watch them both flush. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How does that make you feel? That's good, Carol. Um, all right, Mike. I guess today's about spirituality. We should probably get focused here, my friend. We probably should. Um, so, of course, uh, as always, our live viewers have access right now to be able to ask us questions. And that's what's great about a live Q&A format is that it gives you access. And so I don't want to um, I don't want to downplay that. And I want everyone to take advantage of the opportunity that you have to, to ask any questions you want today about spirituality and faith. Of course, we've got questions that are queued up that folks text in, email, um, you know, hand write on. And the reason for that is because people that are watching via their smartphone can't can't actually see the chat feed. Right. So they text in questions later or they'll shoot an email to us. So whether you're watching on your computers and you're able to actually get in the chat box and talk to us, or you're on your iPhone, aka iPad, uh, then my friends, you know, Mike, it's funny that uh Spreecast does not work on Androids. You know what that tells you? A uh, couple of things. On whether Apple or iPhone is better than Android, please. Really? Do we need to have this debate? Okay, Maria is rebuking us. <laughs> we receive it. Okay, let's go. You don't want to get me on a technical rant. Let's refocus. <clears throat> uh, you know, I like what you said, and it kind of leads into my first question. You green tea unsweet, by the way. Unsweet. Just letting you know, unsweet. No pumps, Carol. No pumps. Zero. Uh, the somebody's calling you out on the straw, bro. Who is <laughs> Maria? I know Maria. I know. You are so right. Stay focused, Maria. <laughs> All, right. All right, here we go. Right. Let's roll. Here we go. So you said that a lot of times someone will ask. Go. Say that again. <laughs> you said a lot of times somebody will ask you how you're doing, and you'll say, "I'm blessed." And uh, yes. you know there are, you know, when we read the Bible. There's a lot of things about blessings, and the first question I have, and this is something a lot of times people struggle with. You know, if you read uh, uh, a lot of the Proverbs, even you'll see you'll see information about this. Why does God bless some and others are not blessed? Well, this is huge because everybody has to understand that God loves everybody, but God does not bless everybody. And that's hard for some people. I know godly people that are not blessed. You understand what I mean by that? Now, in perspective, we're all blessed, right? We're all, I mean, the fact that you woke up above the ground is a good day. You're blessed, right? But I'm talking about the blessing of God. Right here on my trusted iPad, my friend, are 35 scriptures that each of these 35 scriptures give a principle that causes God's blessing. I've studied, I, I literally studied the blessing of God for a year, a whole year. Um, there's over 400 references to blessing, blessed, bless, the blessing of God, right? So I read every single scripture that refers to God's blessing, and I discovered 35 things that we can do that would automatically release God's blessing just by doing those things. Understand that? So, for example, the reason why some people are not blessed is because of this one thing. One thing right here. God is not a respecter of people, but he is a respecter of principles. The bottom line is this. The reason why some people are not blessed is because they don't do what God blesses. I was telling, actually, Carol a couple of days ago, I said, Carol, 
We don't ever want to ask God to bless what we're doing. We want to do what God is blessing. So the real secret to God's blessing in your life is your actions, your fulfillment of principles that bring God's blessing. That's the reason. It's not that God hates you. It's not that God doesn't even love you. It's the fact that there are some people that are not blessed because they don't do what is required to attract God's blessing in their life. A lot of it is their thinking. A lot of it is their attitude. A lot of it is their actions. Those three things affect the level of God's blessing in your life. That's good. <clears throat> I know you mentioned you had like 30 some scriptures. Um, and so those, those three that you just gave us, the, are those, what you, would you call those key principles? Uh, as you said, there are, there are a series of principles that, um, you know, uh, and you said God is a respecter of principles. What are those, those principles or some of the most important principles that, I mean, like today, if I if I sit here and say, man, I feel like God, I'm not blessed by God, what are some, some action steps that I can take? What can I do to change where I'm at today? Well, here's one. I'm going to read you a scripture here, my friends. It's, this is our talk show about spirituality. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. God said this. I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Right. So in other words, God is literally setting before you blessing and curse. This is what he said next. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. You ready? The next verse he said, a curse if you don't obey. Like literally you have got, and this is what I'm on a life lifelong pursuit of. This is why I read a chapter in Proverbs every day. I read the book of Proverbs through every month. I, I literally read it through 12 times a year because I'm after principles. I, I so believe in laws and principles that I, what I'm trying to discover in my life is spiritual laws and principles because I know they'll work. I know they'll work if I live in Florida or if I live in Africa or if I'm a multimillionaire or if I'm down to my last $5, I know that they'll work. And one of the fastest ways to be blessed of God is to obey. And this is why some people are not blessed because they don't obey God. They don't obey what God is leading them to do. They don't obey what God is calling them to do. Like literally, Mike, do you believe we're the first people that were called to do something like Mission 25? No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. But we're some of the just crazy ones that said, okay, Let's do it. Does it make sense? I don't know how. I couldn't even tell anybody how. Like literally, if somebody said, how did you guys do Mission 25? I'd say, three letters, my friends. <laughs> G-O-D. <laughs> God. Period. And lots of insanity right up here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> obedience brings blessing. Okay, that's one principle. Another one is tithing. Tithing is one of the fastest ways to be blessed financially. Another one is um, giving to the poor. Literally, I can't even tell you. I'll give you an example, okay? Today, I was in a long line at Starbucks waiting on this. A guy came out from behind the counter, who I know, but I don't know, just by saying, hi, how's your day? Sure. Came to me in the back of the line, and he kind of whispered. He said, hey, you getting your green tea today? I said, yeah. Like a minute later, he comes back with my green tea and just pats me on the arm and says, have a good day. Wow. Like that, my friends, I can't even tell you how many times those little things happen. I literally, listen, like just Monday morning, I went and bought Starbucks for a homeless person. There's a, you, there's a universal law. That says, given it shall be given. Like literally when you give, it, 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 it sets something in motion to immediately return that to you. So when you take care of the poor the way that you're supposed to is the fastest way to be blessed in my opinion. Like literally, I'm, I'm shocked that most people are still overlooking this principle of blessing. Of how blessed you could be in so many ways of your life by giving to the poor. 
and I, you know, and then another principle of blessing is, uh, let me give you another one. Probably the third one is what God told Abraham, blessing the blessed. See, we, we get jealous of the blessed. We curse the blessed. We, we speak against blessed people because of our insecurities. But if you do that, not only will you be cursed, but you're going to forever remain stagnant. I've learned to find people that are blessed. Mike, as much as I bless the poor, I bless the blessed. Like, I give to blessed people. I help blessed people. I'm kind of blessed people because it brings a blessing on my life. You know, Abraham didn't need anything. Abraham was wealthy. Right. But God told Abraham, I'll bless anybody that blesses you. So you got to find the people that are blessed and you got to start doing good things for them. You, you mark my words, I've done this. I've literally blessed people that were blessed, didn't need anything. Like literally didn't need anything. But because I blessed them, I got blessed. So that's probably the, the, the top three principles I would share. What about you, Mike? I know you're studied this this topic as well man what are some things you've noticed well um those are actually four you gave us so i appreciate that uh, obedience tithing giving to the poor and blessing those that are blessed just because i take notes my friend um don't think that i don't don't think that i don't learn on this show because i do um well you know what if if uh, any of us ever gets too uh too important or too smart to learn, then we're pretty much done anyway. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm especially fond of the first one that you gave us, which is obedience. And really, uh, almost everything else falls in line underneath that. Uh, you know, the, the concept of, of faith and obedience are so intertwined that they can't really be separated. Um, you know, if you read, Hebrews 11, which is the faith chapter in the New Testament, you look at the word faith, you know, in, in, the, in the original Greek without getting into linguistics and whatever, but you can't separate the concepts of believing and acting. You can't separate the concepts of faith and obedience. They're, they're inseparable and you can't, you can't take them apart. But, um, and so, you know, it's without faith, it's impossible to please God. The word faith there could just as easily be translated as obedience. So, you know what I'm saying? So those two things are, are inextric inextricably intertwined and you can't separate them. So, so that's, you know, a lot of, of blessing comes directly from obedience and really everything you listed after that, if you're in obedience to God, then you're going to do those things because the scripture plainly says that you should tithe. It plainly says that you should serve the poor and it plainly says that you should bless those around you. So, um, that's why I kind of, it's like, you know, when Jesus said on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets, it's like, here's the principle, here's the concept, obey, right? So, so that's really what I have to say. I'm not really adding so much to it, but maybe clarifying. Um, that's where I've, where I've come to with my, uh, my understanding or study of it. Absolutely. And Mike, obeying God, we, we kind of view it as some kind of like, oh, it's so hard, right? And, and it is times it is. But the blessing that follows anytime you obey God is massive. It's it's extreme. It's it's worth it. I'll say it's worth it. Whatever God is like leading you to do, calling you to do, asking you to do, if you'll do it as painful as it may be in the moment, the results that follow behind that of blessing will be so worth whatever price you had to pay. Well, and a lot of times it isn't necessarily painful, but it may not make make sense. So sometimes God asks you to do something that in your in your mind, you're like, I don't understand this. I don't understand how this is going to help. I don't understand why I would do this. Um, but he that's faithful and little will be made ruler over much. And sometimes God has you take a little step so that you can understand your bigger step later. And, and that's, you know, like Mission 25 is a great example. You mentioned that, um, you know, we... Some, we, we took some smaller steps before that happened because God was leading us to the place that he's like, okay, now here's what I want you to do. And we're like, oh, okay, now it makes, well, it still didn't make sense, but we did it anyways. Can I throw one more thing out? Because I was just looking at my iPad here. No. Okay, Genesis 39 and 5 says this. It came to pass from the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, 
watch this, watch this, that the Lord blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. Watch this. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and the field. Now watch this. We're talking about the Egyptians here. Right. Were blessed because of their association with Joseph. Now one of the greatest revelations I've ever discovered is you literally can be blessed by bringing blessed people into your inner circle and into your life. You're a single person. The number one thing you should be pursuing is a companion that is blessed. Because, or if you're in business, you want to hire people that are blessed. Or if, you, if you're looking for, for more friends, find friends that are blessed. Because I'm going to tell you something. You don't even realize how much blessing flows because someone that's blessed, it's good measure, praise, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's coming out of people. It's literally, it's like a river of blessing that just flows from that person's life. That if you get around blessed people, their blessing is going to rub off on you, it's going to affect you. Like God literally blessed the Egyptians for Joseph's sake. And I've literally with my own eyes, have seen God's blessing. I literally believe, Mike, that there's blessing that falls on our kids' lives that have nothing to do with them, literally nothing to do with them, that literally it's a result of God doing it for our sake. Like, think of the ways God blessed Solomon, literally, and it said, for David's right. sake. Like, you don't realize your value when you walk in God's blessing and how that, you know, I, I used to tell people, if you hire me, your business will flourish. <laughs> I know that sounds a little like borderline cocky, but it's not. That's that inner confidence in God's blessing that you get blessed when you bring the blessed into your life. Like, God blessed the, if God would bless the Egyptians, uh, and, and the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord was on all that was in the house and in the field. Right. Like literally every part of the Egyptians were blessed because of Joseph. So get around blessed people, my friend. And that is one principle that will start attracting blessing into your life. I like that. Um, so, so looking at it from, from the other side, if, if I'm evaluating my own life and let's say, uh, I'm, tr I'm looking at this and saying, okay, I can follow these principles of obedience and tithing and all those things, but I want to be sort of complete and, and look over my life and say, is there anything in my life that would really hinder God's blessing from entering my life? What, what would I be looking for? What kind of things would hinder that? Well, the number one thing that's going to hinder God's blessing is disobedience. The, the second thing, Mike, and this is another area of blessing I want to talk about if we have time. If not, we'll dive into it next Wednesday. Is faith. Like, you can't even please God without faith. It's literally, God said it's impossible. Everything you attempt to do, every, every, everything you attempt to do is all in vain if you don't have faith. Like, literally, the most important thing in your life is faith. Faith is everything because faith attracts the miraculous. Faith is what brings God's pleasure. And I have learned, Mike, that one of the things that hinders God's blessing in our life is a lack of faith. Because when you start, in fact, you know how serious it is? I don't think we take this as, as serious as we should. And I'm going to give you a scripture that's going to hurt. This is your shock coming from the nurse here. This is spirituality, my friends. We're giving you a little, uh, this is going to be a little tough. But in the book of Romans, it literally says, he that doubteth is damned. Mm. Everything in your life is damned. It's like damned. It's stopped. It's, it's cursed. Doubt equals curse. Like that's why the Bible tells us to fight the fight of faith. That's why we need to follow Jude 20 that tells us to build up our faith praying in the Holy Ghost. That's why we need to understand that our focus needs to be to grow and build our faith, to protect our faith, because faith is what's going to bring God's blessing. A lack of faith hinders it. It stops it. We're damned. We're damned. 
Mission 25 is damned if we doubt. It's damned. Hear me? Your ministry is damned if you doubt. Your marriage is damned. Like you have to have faith to break through. You have to have faith to even please God. You have to have faith. Listen, ready for this? Talk about the blessing of God. You go back to when Jesus went to his hometown. He says, he says, I did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Think of what's missing in our life because of our unbelief. Think of the times that God pointed at us and said, I did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. You know, people follow our ministry, Mike, Mission 25, Soul Winners Boot Camp. The common denominator is, is we have miracles. We have blessings. The Crown Plaza gave us the ballroom for free, which is unheard of. Starbucks gave us 400 cups of coffee. I told you about the Muslim man giving us all that ice cream in Philadelphia. Why? Because we walk in faith. Things don't make sense to us. Sometimes we literally, you know what the Bible says? You walk by faith, not by sight. I can't see it 90% of the time. Listen, Mike will tell you, 90% of the time we just can't see it. Carol will tell you. We just can't see it. Like, I'm still astounded. We're five missions trips in. Like, and I feel like we got the devil by the throat. Like, we're already marching into Chicago and Detroit. We survived Los Angeles, St. Louis, Philadelphia, Tampa, Nashville. It's amazing to me. But it's faith, my friend. You walk by faith. You walk by faith, not by sight. You can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't understand it. You can't touch it. It doesn't make sense, but that's why faith is so important because faith is faith. Faith says God's going to do it. God's going to provide. You know, look at Abraham. Why was so Abraham so blessed? Because when he was doing what didn't make sense and his own son questioned, his own child questioned, Dad, you know, when Abraham was about to kill him, you know what Abraham said? God will provide. Sometimes a man of faith will say nothing else but God is able. Yeah. God will provide. Literally, I don't. if you're coming to me asking for an explanation, you know what it's going to be? God is able. That's it. With God, all things are possible. That's it. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not going to add anything to that. I'm not going to try. Listen, I've done this long enough to know, Mike, you as well can, can share. Uh, all I'm going to say is God will provide. Like literally, remember when we were sitting there and said, guys, let's juice for the homeless. And remember our staff, we kind of had that little heart to heart. It was a defining moment for us. I said, guys, if I ever speak anything as a leader, I'm telling you, I'm a man of faith. I operate in the gift of faith. We got to go with it. Don't look at me and say it can't be done. Let's do it. Like that's our. Did y'all lose Matt? I lost him. There you are. Apparently, Spreecast wanted you to stop talking. <laughs> hey, uh, it, you wanted to stop talking. Great stuff. Let's see if we can get Matt back on here. I want to follow up with a question that Marie has down here. Um, I want to say one more quick thing, Mike. Are you with me now? I'm back. I just want to say one more quick thing. You sure. remember when they were in the storm? Uh, or wait a minute. You remember when they couldn't cast the devil out of that child and they brought him to, to Jesus? Sure. You know what Jesus said to them? Two things. He said, oh, and he probably groaned. He said, oh, you faithless. And you know what the second thing he said to them? Kind of going to hurt a little bit. And perverse. Yeah. Like Jesus said, you know what? You're as bad as a pervert if you're faithless. Like you faithless and perverse generation. Like that's hardcore. But Jesus didn't play when it comes to faith, my friend. Faith is the secret. I'm telling you. Faith is the secret. Anyway, what's Maria's question, Mike? Maybe we Mar- can handle it. Maria asks, uh, what do you do when it doesn't make sense and you really feel God leading you? 
to do something. Um, and it seems like everyone around you is trying to talk you out of it. Ever been there? Maybe. Almost everything I've ever done, people have tried to talk me out of it. <laughs> you know, I, I'm probably the last guy to get advice from because I have crazy faith. I do. I'm, I'm honest in telling you, I just have, I have crazy faith. I, I really do. And I don't mean that in any other way than just I'm not afraid to do it. So if I feel like God's leading me to do something, I'm going to do it. You know, Mike, what's your take on that, man? Well, I, I think that God's opinion of me is much more important than the people around me. Um, and so, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, I understand that God loves me unconditionally, but uh, I want to please God much more than the people around me. And so if I really feel like God's leading me to do something, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And you know what? People are fickle. So it's really easy for people to just sort of say things um, or, or not give support or whatever today. And two days later, once you start doing that thing, they may jump right in and start supporting you. So um, they'll change. Don't put too much stock in what people are saying around you. That's, I mean, that's simple, but just do it. If God says to do it, then do it. Listen, I wholeheartedly believe that. I wholeheartedly, Mike, we're living, we can't share this right now, but I know you're knowing what I'm thinking. We're living examples of somebody that was highly critical of Mission 25, that was skeptical of it, that really didn't believe in it, that showed the video to their church on Sunday. Like that to me is a God thing, you know, and that's the testimony of what Mike just said. When you jump in and you do it, God will give you favor. And if God doesn't give you favor with those people, it's not meant to be. It's okay. Listen, if you, if you need everybody's agreement and support, then you will forever be a wisher and a couch potato and a do-nothing person. You're never going to get everyone to like and agree with everything you do. You're just not. But anyway, that's a, we'll, we'll maybe dive more into that on the Soul Winner Show, Mike. Hey, it was great. We love you. Take to heart what Mike and I shared today, my friends. Really take to heart about the blessing of God and about faith. And we will look forward to seeing you in about 28 minutes for the Soul Winner Show. The link will be on um, uh, Twitter, Facebook. And, of course, if you're subscribed to Spree Cash, you'll have it in your email box. But, friends, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for Fuel for Success about business and entrepreneurship. And uh, don't forget, really, if this brought value to you, then you owe it to your you owe it to humanity to share it. Like that's that's the secret to blessing. You gotta get you can't hoard, you gotta give. If this was a blessing to you, pass it to family and friends and church members or whoever you think it would help. Share it on your Facebook or Twitter. Text the link to somebody that you think this would encourage, maybe somebody that's struggling mm -hmm. in their faith. And be a blessing, my friends. That's what this show's all about. Is we want to help as many people as we can. So God bless, and we will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharp.